So let, let me first explain a little bit what OpenStack is and what it does. And then I'll show you how contribution to OpenStack works, what the paradigms are with OpenStack, and how testing of OpenStack is done and how OpenStack is built. Um, and it get, gets released as an open source project. And um, continuous integration, testing of that is a very important part. So OpenStack is open source software for building private and public clouds. It basically contains um, a couple of shared services and you have com compute and this one is auto. Okay, it was out, no problem. And it's, it's a compute server. You have um, CPUs that you want to run your workloads on. You need networking set up for that and you need storage it's, it's, um, attached to that. That's how the project started. You have a, applications contained using the, the APIs and you have a dashboard um, that can show that and use as a graphical interface. And with all of that, it pro provides components for infrastructure as a service. It was started six years ago by Rackspace and Nava, delivering the two core components. The, um, from Rackspace came, came the um, Swift component for object storage. From the Nava came the compute component called Nova. And today, more than 200 companies are involved in that ecosystem. So this is one of the companies. Releases happen every six months. And um, if you look at the names here, all of them are in alphabetical order. So the current release is the Newton release. All of those names come from a place where the design summit happened. So the mid, um, Okata design, so we, had, we had a design summit two, two, two weeks ago in Barcelona. And near Barcelona, there's, um, I think it's a region called, called Okata. And that's, um, so that we, we, um, the OpenStack community looked look for a place named O, starting with, with the O that is close to Barcelona. It came up with Okata. Pike is something um, close to Boston. And Queens is where well, the next summit will be in half a year. And in a year's time, the, next, the, the summit after that will be in um, Australia. And Queens, there's a Queens Park near, um, is it Brisbane or where, where is, no, Sydney, near, near Sydney. Um, so that's, that's how all those names are made. I don't know if it happened after that. Let's, let's see. Today, open, the latest release is OpenStack Newton. Um, so during the six months going up for, for Newton, more than six million lines of codes were changed. More than 196,000 reviews were done. Of every change gets reviewed, and I'll explain later how that's done. Um, so that consists of 40, 000, over 40,000 commits. More than 2,680 contributors were part of that, including Pete, and um, more of 183. And it's, if I count it correctly, it's 183 organizations that were part of that. So if you look at the different contributors on that one, um, you see different kind of companies um, contributing in, in different places, including SOSE. Um, but it's not only companies, it's also un unaffiliated individuals who are just contributing for the fun of it or in the hope of a job. It's commercial entities, it's non-profit organizations, it's governments, it's research organizations. And the number, the quality, but also the area of, of contribution can change as with every open source project. So it's important for such an infrastructure that it takes care of that, that change and that everything is documented and so on. And if you look at how OpenStack is um, done, look at the CI infrastructure. Alex once once said, it's the most insane CI infrastructure I've ever been part of. I will explain why it's insane. You've seen the numbers, you see 40,000 changes over a, a time of six months. A lot of change, so those are the commits, not only not, not, not the ones that, that were done the iterations. And all of those need, need, need testing. Let's look a little bit what it is. Um, there are OpenStack projects, lots of different names, I don't need to go over that. But there are projects together with their Python clients, with their command lines, the client libraries, um, that have a, a part of that, each is an independent project, run individually. Um, and then you have pro, um, programs or horizontal efforts like documentation, infrastructure, and part of, of both of those teams. Um, there are common libraries called the Oslo Project. There's a QA team that takes care of not doing manual testing, 
or whatever. It takes care of the test infrastructure for integration testing, for upgrade testing, for automatic testing. There's release management, there's an internalization team that translate, uh, translates mainly the user interface, um, and there's vulnerability management, and so on. So looking at the release management, it's a time-based release. Every six months the release goes out. Uh, and um, there's each, for each cycle, there's a design summit at the beginning of it. That's changing slightly going, going forward. But it also means that we have, um, so in Barcelona was, was discussed what, what needs to be done for the next release. That sh it will come out in February. And um, at the same time, people are working this, the whole time on, on trying on the master branch and can, can submit changes on that one directly on that one. Um, and bit in that time frame until February, there will be several milestone releases, alpha and beta releases that will be done. And after the release, stable branches will be created that will not get new features but bug fixes. So look at the CI challenges. We have lots of individual projects, lots of individual Git repositories. Um, last time I looked, it was over 1,500. I guess when I double check now, we are at 1,600. Some of those projects need to work together. It's not individual projects, but it's, it's a lot of projects working together to deliver one big project, the OpenStack project. So you need to test them also together. And you also want to, the, the goal for developers is that he can always, or she can always check out the code. One, de develop on the code, and if any test fails, it's your own responsibility. It's not somebody else's because the trunk should always be clean. It should always, always, always be working. You want to stay start of that. You don't want 2,000 developers um, checking out a broken tree and nobody can, can do it unless somebody fixes it. Um, and a, a, um, a paradigm here is also completely automated testing. Another thing is with, with one, over 1,500 projects, you want to have a consistent infrastructure. You don't want to have one, one team doing something completely different from the other and that 1,500 times. That will, it doesn't scale. So you want to have that consistent for all OpenStack projects, for all the code projects, um, also including those 1,500, a couple of um, so-called StackForge projects or unofficial projects that are not part of under the governance of, of OpenStack, but to just use the infrastructure and are related somehow to OpenStack. But the same consistency CI infrastructure is also used for documentation and also for, for system administration, including the CI itself. And I'll explain later how that works for documentation and infrastructure. So if you look at the normal Git workflow, um, and Git is, is used in that case, it shows still here Jenkins, I'll explain here that this one's not, not the case. So we start on the on the upper left there, with, 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 with one project, here's a compute project called, called Nova, in the master branch. You clone that into your local environment, then um, do a, create, create a branch of CDU normally in Git, if you want. Make, make a com commit, work on that commit, fix it, run unit tests, commit it, and then send it to our, our review server, which is running Garrett, another open source project. Once it's up there, it gets testing, automatic testing, those tests testing need to pass. And once those tests pass, it gets, gets, uh, it gets reviewed by, by, by people. So manual process on that review step. Is the code good enough? Is that the right thing going forward? And then it gets approved, and then it gets tested again, and then it gets merged into master, and then it starts again. And all of that happening in parallel. So let's look at some part of that and illustrate what's going on here and the paradigms behind that. So peer review means anybody here can review. Anybody of you can, can get an account on the Garrett and, and review with that. There are two levels of it. So the plus one and the minus one. Plus one, it's good, looks good to me. Minus one, there, something should be changed. Anybody can do that. You don't need to have any qualification for that. Um, Core reviewers are a special group of people that can give a plus two. This is great, this should, be go, should go in. Or a minus two, this should never go in. Go and, and block, block a change. Um, and the, the, the practice is that if two core reviewers have given their, their plus twos, then, it, then, 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 then the, the seconds normally um, approves the change and it and merges. 
Part of that is also um, we do automatic review by tools. We don't want to argue about where white space should look like, should, should be placed in Python code and, and so on. Um, we have tools that can automate the test and, and run lint tests on that and agree on a common style and then enforce it with tools so there's no need to argue about any of those styles. You argue once how to test it and then you can enforce it. And then it's in and it's the same for everybody. Um, also testing is done on, on different scenarios. So it's done on different hypervisors, different storage backends, different databases, different OSs. So different tests done in, in different ways. And by the way, if you ever have a question here, feel free to interrupt me anytime. You can talk about that. If I'm speaking too fast or don't explain it good, just please ask. An important concept here is gating. And um, well, I said before, you always want to have ma the master tree in a state that everybody can check it out and it passes all the tests and can continue working on that. So that all the, the, the breakage in that code in the end is the code you edit yourself. So gate, gating ensures code quality and it protects the developer that they can start from that code. And it's, um, we don't have a review ma 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 merge, merge ma manually somebody and, and then, then testing happens, but testing happens, happens before that. So we test before we merge somebody in, in the current state, and I'll explain that. And it's testing against all other ones. So let's, let's look at a sequential merge. Um, assume we have three changes scheduled for, for, for testing, A, A, B, A, B, and C. And um, we want to test the tree as it looks like and gets, gets checked out by, by the developers. So we are not testing A and B and C in parallel, but we test A and then B, and then um, we, we test, um, run, run three tests in, in parallel, we merge A and B and, and, and uh, we merge A and, and test it, then we merge A and B and test it, and then we merge A, B and C and test it. That helps us to merge hundreds of changes a day, because we can test those in parallel in that case, and it tests all of that as in the same state of the project or together with, with, with several projects um, sequentialized. That we, that we don't know at, at every time this change was tested against this state of the project and the 1500 other projects were in this, that state again. Question. So this is here the, 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 the step af, um, after it's approved. If if step step if step step if you submit step B, it will be tested off the head without A, B, and C. Um, if D get, then gets approved, um, we will merge A, B, C first, then merge D in, and then test that state and and, to, and try um, and run the test suites. But what happens now if let's say if B is broken, if B fails the test suite? Um, we have tested C A and it was successful. We tested C it was successful. So what we're doing here is um, we retest C, um, remove, we, we merge A, um, merge, merge, merge C on top of that with, without B and test again from, from, from scratch. So we always test the state that, was, that merges in the end. And that the developer checks out. And all of those testing here this was just three changes of this also multiple changes is done in parallel. So if we have sometimes 10 or 15 changes merging at the same time, if the topmost fails, okay, we need to start all other 14 months again. But in most cases, it, it can, can go through and we have 15 changes merge um, directly after the other, with one second delay or whatever. Um, <coughs> and, and that is, is an important difference here, the gating to, to other projects. Um, where normally you don't, you either test after merging and then notice it fails and then you have to revert it. That's happened with, with many projects. Um, and, that's, and also you, the, the way it, it's done, it's, it's tested before it merges and it's tested exactly the state when it, when it merges. So what are we testing? Um, Oh, that's also a depend, depends on a cross repository. Sometimes you have a change that needs changes in multiple 
multiple repositories. So you can say this one depends on a change in another repository. That, that, mean, that is uh, in the minimal level in, in sequential and queuing. So the first one will only merge after the second one is merged. Um, but it can also be that the test suite checks out the Git tree of the other repository and then it checks out the Git tree with that dependent change merged in. Um, and that's those, those two work, work together. Yeah. If there are merge conflicts, it, it gets taken out of the same as, as it fails. Um, and the user gets, gets informed that it's a merge conflict and has, has to do, has, has to regress it. And what we are also doing is, um, with, with that amount of changes going in daily, that after each change merges, um, we try the, the CI system checks all other open changes, whether any of them has a merge conflict, because they will, can, cannot merge in that state. And um, if any of those merged, then they get directly a minus one and, and, and fail. And the, and the developer submitting that, that code knows he has to rebase that code and so it goes in. Yeah. There's a tool called, called Zool that does it. So it's every, everything automated. Nothing of this is the many. So the, the only step manual is reviewing and, and the plus one and plus twos and the approval. That's the only manual step. But then it's, the, the tool looks at the open changes, uh, which of those are related, going by queue. So for the same project, they're all merged together and that's all done automatically. This is the tool. Well, that can, that can happen. Um, you can have three core reviewers um, approve at the same time, or, or, or one, one after the other. Um, one second. It, it happens often that we have in, in some changes. And it, since it's also cross projects, I said the projects work together, projects get tested together. It can happen that one project. Um, a reviewer in one project um, approves something, and at the same time, in, in other projects, they do the same. So it's, it's normal that we have 10, 20 page, pages at, um, in the gate queue, gating, so after approval in the final testing. Some of that might be at the same time, some of that might be five minutes after the other, or, or an hour in between. So, okay, there was another check for open reviews. I had that. So, for testing. So, um, op OpenStack tests, run, runs all of the tests in a new virtual machine. In Jenkins, you, you of, often reuse a virtual machine for all the environment. But OpenStack has, has said, um, we are testing everything on a fresh new virtual machine. That means we, um, OpenStack can give out to the, to the jobs root, root access. If they need to change anything, and we're talking here about storage testing, network testing, stuff that needs, needs root access, they can screw up in the system because they throw away the virtual machine afterwards and don't need to use it anymore. But that means also it's a high stress test on the clouds. Um, the tests are run on OpenStack clouds, currently Rackspace, OSIC, OVH, Bluebox, Internet, and their own infra cloud from the OpenStack CI te infra team are, are used. And there are currently over 1,500 virtual machines in the overall quota available for testing. Um, we had, half, half a year ago, the quota was at 1,000 virtual machines, and we often reached that quota. That we had 1,000 virtual machines for testing, all busy at the same time. And that, that happens because some of, if you have a change um, running for, for Nova, it might run three virtual, uh, full, full, full integration tests. Um, plus it builds the documentation, plus it does a syntax and linting check, plus it does a security check. So it's, you easily get 10 jobs running for a for, for simple, simple change. And so yeah. The CIF infrastructure of um, OpenStack contains, on the one hand, of bugs are reported in Launchpad. There's, since we have run into a couple of problems with Launchpad, um, that doesn't fit the OpenStack project, it has, a, has an own um, bug tracker and been written, it's called Storyboard. Um, it is used for sure for all the development. There's Garrett used for the code review. Zool is a um, 
is used for, for in, in queuing and running these changes. Um, Gearman is for, for connection between, and NodePole is used for, for building images. I'll talk later about some more of those components. So if you look at the CI workflow, that's how it was until, until June. You submit local changes via Git review to Garrett, goes to Git repositories, it goes to Zool, and Zool distributes the load over, over the Jenkins servers, and it was at that point we had eight Jenkins server running in parallel. So that was the largest Jenkins infrastructure that I'm aware of. Each of them could, could um, had access to, uh, we, had, we, had mirrors, we, have, we have mirrors in, in each, each cloud of all the packages and um, yeah, each, each your, your node pool images gets, get started on demand and, and, and associated with one of the Jenkins's. Um, so an image get, gets launched for each, each job, runs it up, Jenkins got so here's, here's a new slave, use that one for the next job running it and so on. And that was a complicated setup. And Jenkins was basically used for running the jobs in a very limited way. And we ran into quite a few problems with, with Jenkins. And so, so, so now it's Jenkins and have Zoo Launcher, which is a simple, ansible script that runs there and launches the jobs. Um, there are eight, eight Zoo Launchers, and since then, um, the scale of project scales much, much better. If you look at Zool and see what's going on, that is a strange situation. We have 670 jobs right now in check. There was a, um, a failure in the infrastructure before. Otherwise, we have less. We have 27 jobs, changes approved. And the post queue, that, that means after merging a change. Also, um, we have 60 changes. And those jobs in the post queue are normally creating a table and uploading it, creating um, documentation and uploading it to the documentation website and similar changes. And all of the work is done, and Zool takes care that those job, um, for each change, the right jobs are run, gets reported back to Garrett, and gets get them queued here. So if you look at the, at the, at the graph, you still see that all the tests at that point of time were completely used, and we are, lo we are launching seven, up to 700 jobs per hour to get good events. We had a queue of 6,200 6, jobs in the, in the queue at one point. So it can be quite, quite um, busy at some times. So how, how do you system administrate something that big and that large? The infra team is responsible for all the CI systems, um, what else for monitoring tools like Cacti and, and, and logging tools, um, IRC bots, Etherpad, uh, all the infrastructure runs, runs in Puppet and, and so on. So responsible for everything. And it's a distributed team of, I think right now, roughly 10, 10 admins um, that work, some, some in the US, some, some in Australia, some in Europe. And the, the paradigm here of the team, as I said before, people come and go, can come and can go anytime. Um, everything needs to be reviewed and they don't want to do it and automate it. They don't want to type a command. So they, they, they think, the infra team thinks that system administration tasks should be performed by robots, and the inputs to it should go to code review. Infrastructure to the, um, of as code is here a very important paradigm, but also um, collaboration on that, on the infrastructure, peer review, and um, automation of everything up to a limit, but the goal is here to automate as much as possible. And everything is public. As I said, everybody of you can review any change, but, but also everybody of you can review anything. If you want to change Zool or the setup of Zool, how jobs are launched, how jobs are run, the Jenkins jobs, how, how they are defined, anybody can, can, can send in a change and it gets, gets, gets um, runs over the tests. So we have to be careful what, what tests run, what, what they can do. Um, but that makes it also very easy for anybody to contribute. If you want to change it, how, how something is tested, you don't need to go and ask an, an, an administrator to, to, to go through some GUI or give you permission on that, that GUI. Everything is in text files and can be done. Um, 
But discussion is on, in, on IRC with public archives that helps with the distribution to share the knowledge. All of that helps here with everything public to share knowledge and, and have a team um, across, across the globe working together. And the same is for the other open sec projects. So peer review. We have multiple eyes on changing prior to merging. And um, that helps a lot with, with some of that work. It's also good infrastructure to, for developing new, new solutions, particularly for the distributed team. And it, it also trains the team to be, to be collaborative by, 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 by default. You don't have a single point of failure, and if that person disappears, then nobody knows what's going on. You have always a second person that reviewed the change, that knows what's going on, and, that, and shares this way the, all the knowledge. That might be overkill for some of you in, in some areas, but it helps a lot with the, with, 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 the, um, with the project going, going forward. So changes that are done in CI in, for, for any changes to the CI infrastructure itself, um, and it's similar for, for code. Um, there are tests for, so Flake 8 is, um, or PEP 8, are Python style checks. There are changes for, for, um, for bash code that it follows specific style, style and check for, 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 for errors. You can't execute every bash, bash script, but you can check that it is, is consistent. That it, you can do some syntax checking on it. Um, the same with, with Puppet Manifests. You can do, do some, some validation, some linting. You can check the XML code. And we have some conventions that certain files we have, we have projects files that have that are several thousand lines long, and then we check that, that certain sections are in, in, the, in alphabetical order, um, that you find what's, what's going on. And all those checks that can be um, implemented by, by, by bots is implemented by bots. You don't want an individual to check that a list is alphabetical. That can be done by a bot, so let's do it. And nobody needs to argue about that. And files get passed whether they work. So it's not, you need somebody to look over it and, and see whether everything is fine. Because with the, like, with, with the power that, that the system has, everybody can, can do hard work. On the other hand, um, we try to test for the, for the most common case, but some review is definitely needed. Um, after the review in the CI system, we have automatic de deployment. So change gets checked in. And after the change, either it gets rolled out to the system, to Zool itself, to the Jenkins, you know, the Zool launchers, and the configuration of, of them, to the wiki or the um, Etherpad setup. Um, so Puppet Master applies those changes directly, runs every 50 minutes, or Puppet has some, some ways to, to um, pull, pull the changes in. But long as 30 minutes after the change was, was merged, the change is live in the system. And if anything fails, then you can revert the change and somebody reviews it again and, and rolls it back. If you look at the, the I said before, every, everything here is, is done via text files. So we have JJB, the Jenkins job builder. That was necessary for Jenkins. It's so that allow users to not use a graphical front end, but use text files for administration. And um, we still use that for, 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 for Zool Launcher um, and use the same syntax. So it allows to, to define job templates, to name as a variable, and that checkouts, git, git checkout of a branch, for example. It allows to group jobs, and you have a very powerful language here um, to do that. So once, once that's done, the job is, is done, the question is um, what, what to do how to start those jobs. I said images get, a new image gets started, a new virtual machine gets started with every change, or with every job. And NodePool handles those, those virtual machines get, that they get started. Um, it works with any kind of open stack provider. And every day a new image gets, gets created for, for, for all those different, different clouds and for each distribution in, in that. And those images contain the complete git, git, git tree of at that time of the, of the day, plus, plus a cache of distribution packages. And so that when, when the image starts up, it has already 99% of, of all the git repositories in there and only needs the changes since, 
since this morning, plus a change that you're, t you're testing to apply. And you don't need to um, copy 300 megabytes of Git um, repository every, every, for every change over. Um, so that speeds, speeds up and reduces network traffic and therefore speeds up supply. The, the backside is that our small images are now, um, I think, 6 gigabytes, has a size of 6 gigabytes. So, yeah. And those images are built with Disk Image Builder. And more for also the spins up instances based on the desired distributions um, on demand. So when a job's got submitted, we have a couple of um, virtual machines are always there waiting for the new job. But if you submit 20, 20 changes en masse, then there won't be enough and Noto figures out, okay, I need so, so many of those images and, and starts them in, the, in any of the clouds that are available and gets distributed that way. So system administration, as I said before, Puppet modules are used for that. So it's using Puppet, it's using Ansible, everything of that is in Git. And um, still, there are cases where the infra team, um, the root team needs, has, needs, needs, has agent, needs access to the console to look at some log files, to look at a uh, Havoc running, running process to, to do manual debugging. Um, and can do that in those cases, but those are, that's its exception for all the routine tasks and Ansible is used or, or Puppet. And for specific services, also individuals can, can have access. So configuration management. Um, let's assume you want to do a, a new server that is a translation server um, that allows the, the translators to translate any of the, of, the, of the projects. If you want to do that, um, you first set up a new server as a developer on, um, in your own. We, we need to set up a server to run that service. So setting up a new Git repository um, with the Puppet code in, in that one. You, you, you start deploying locally in a virtual machine the service and, and write Puppet instructions for deploying it in an automatic way. Um, then submit those changes to, the, to, to Garrett that somebody can review them. Yes, looks everything fine. Um, a development server is set up, then is the next step in the cloud. So that this translation server gets, gets run in the development environment and people can look at it, does everything work, but also the um, info team can see that it's really completely automated. It can be deployed and if that setup is, is working fine, um, we set up a production server using Puppet only. So completely automatic. Um, everything is, and, and afterwards, maintenance of, of that server is done via Puppet. And anybody can, can change that. That means the uh, infra team is needed in that case to set up an IP address, to, to set up DNS perhaps, but that's currently not possible to do um, via a script. Um, to start that virtual machine for, for the first time, because it needs, it's all in a, in a, in a diff, different, um, diff, different way in a different zone, a different tenant, but that's it basically. The rest is fully automated. And major manual task, like an update of Garrett, an, update, an operating system update, they are done in a collaborative way. So for, an, for a Garrett update, um, that test, that is tested as much as possible on the development system. And then if there are manual steps involved, then the team prepares an Etherpad and writes down all the first outlines of step that needs to be done, then um, adds for each step the, the, the commands that needs to be executed. Those are tested on the development server and other team members review them for, for such bigger tasks. And once, once that everything is reviewed, okay, a downtime is announced and the team hopefully only has to copy and paste those instructions from the ESA patch to the command line. Sometimes it's, um, a screen is used, um, but everybody that is not root can, can comment on that and say it's, it's okay. You, you might, for the translation server, you don't have root access to it, but you can say, okay, I need to update this. Those are the two steps that are needed as a manual one and, and run them and test them. Um, so a very, very collaborative effort. Sometimes a little bit overkill. You're thinking, oh, what's, what's going on? But it helps a lot for the team to learn on that one and, and to share knowledge. There are some limitations to all of that. Sometimes you need to log into a server to look into something. Um, 
for some of the steps it's more complicated to, to prepare all of that or, or, or do it via puppets. Um, and you also need to take care of puppets. You need to be privately managed. You need to put them into a, a database. Hira is used for that one. Okay, so much on um, OpenStack CI system. Any questions directly to that one? Have I scared you away or? <laughs> So if you want to learn a little bit more about what's going on here, there's some references about OpenStack in general. You can go to www.openstack.org or look at the ci.openstack.org for the infrastructure as the main page or look at the documentation where also the systems are documented. Um, we are here at SUSECon, so there's also an open SUSE wiki where we explain how you can, can use OpenStack itself on your own distribution. Um, we have cloud packages for OpenStack. There's an installation tutorial for OpenSUSE and SLES at the Docs OpenStack page. Um, that's current for, for, for Newton. And um, we also have all the OpenStack Cloud product that you can buy and get commercial support and run OpenStack in your data center. The team shares everything, the infra team, even the public, most of the publications are shared and available. So you can see what others do. I didn't collaborate on, on those slides because I used LibreOffice and not text files. So shame on me, but um, thanks to the rest of the team. Okay, that's it for my side. Questions? Comments? You are laughing. What's, yes, what's, what's, what's wrong? It's way more complex than But, but how, how many changes a day do you need to handle? <laughs> And that's why I said it's the most ins insane CI infrastructure. It needs to handle quite a lot with a lot of turnaround. But I think for me the most important paradigm is besides the infrastructure, the code on the administration side, is the other part of the, the, the gating part. Where you don't, where you always test before you merge. That's, that's done by the, that, that's what I, I've seen as it was the first time in OpenStack. And all of that op infrastructure, by the way, is open source. Um, the team is, is insisting that they, everything they do is open source, and they're only one in open source info, um, components. And they are projects that use Zool the same way. Um, so the media wiki, pro, um, the, the, the big media, media wiki is developed using using Zool and some others as well. Other comments, questions? Okay. Um, thanks for listening. I hope it was, was helpful and interesting. And I wish you a, wish you a nice evening here at the Smithsonian. Thanks. <laughs>